guys, welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's a 14 Cadillac ATS, got the big 2.5 in it, I think it is. Needs a battery. Uh, battery's in the trunk, looks like it's pretty well buried. So I thought I'd bring you guys along, we'll see what kind of process it is to just replace the battery. Now, I already cleaned all the stuff out of the trunk. We gotta pull this little guy out. Once that's out of the way, we gotta pull this little cover off, and that gives us access just to the negative battery terminal it looks like now we're supposed to pull this entire quarter trim off all this to get to the battery and this little threshold here but to take this off completely we're supposed to pull the back seats this is this uh car does not have fold down back seats you got to take the seat cushion off the seat back off to get to a couple fasteners that hold the carpet on i'm hoping that we don't have to do that, that we can loosen it and just kind of set it to the side. Uh, I don't want to turn this into a you know gigantic project. I just want to put a battery in my car. Not that it's my car, but you know, put a battery in a car, the car. So we're gonna pull these little Christmas tree fasteners out here. We might have to go look at service data to learn a little more. Uh, let's see. We need a wedging device. Whoa! Whoa! Almost dropped that where I didn't want to. Ah, there we go. Boy, them suckers come out hard. So that's all they are. It's just your little Christmas tree. Standard. Standard equipment. They typically break. Uh, let's see. There's a fuse box cover way up in here. See if I can't get that out of our way so that doesn't fall off. So it's just a little, probably didn't see it up under there, but that's a little fuse box cover. We'll set that to the side. I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking anymore, folks. We're gonna pull this little plastic piece up and out of here if we can, because we've got to be able to get the carpet around the trunk hinge there. Let's find some kind of apparatus to pry with. Not sure what holds that in there quite yet. Uh, actually, it has an opening. Yeah, it does have an opening there. It's going to be behind the carpet, possibly. My fingers back here. Looks like maybe this carpet does go up behind the upper panel here. Put that kind of right down. Who remembers when batteries used to be under the hood and it took almost five minutes to change one? Oh, how times have changed. So we've got that on the correct side of the hinge right now. So we'll leave that. I think we'll take this uh, little threshold piece off here. That way we can allow our carpet to swing out. So we've got to take these little hooks off. To get them off, you've got to pry the little plastic cover off. And I think, yep, oh yeah, T45. Crack them babies loose. You don't get to use the old T45 nut driver too often. You just ain't got enough lead in your pencil to turn it. Something fastener is that big, but... Oh, Chevrolet was taking these suckers pretty serious, man. Tying down some cargo in the back here. Caddy, locked tight and everything. So there's two of these. We gotta take these babies off. to install too many batteries nowadays usually the advanced auto parts I think the O'Reilly's the zone napper I think they all put in uh, batteries for free for customers nowadays I don't think they do these ones for free though folks to be honest with you and now this probably has some lock tabs across it let's see 
be my, my guess that it does. So we'll give it a little pull up. Ah! Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. We'll find out. Now I'm gonna have to take a borrow your light here, folks. Have a little look. Yep, it's got tabs. I seen one, a blue one I saw. Let's see if we can't work it. There's another one. There's some more. If it sounds like it's breaking, it's because you're doing it right. There we go. So there's all that we have down here. One, a two, a three, a four. Four tabs and apparently, uh, was there any more? We lost, so it has these little metal cleats that go over the blue tabs. One of them fell off here. I'm going to push that on. There. So make sure on, on the blue pieces you got the metal pieces. And I would have thought there was a couple tabs. It looks like it's supposed to have some here. This is on the bottom of the bracket, but there's actually nothing for them to go into because they end up right about Right about the area of my finger and there's there's nothing there so that's quite interesting so we'll set this thing down now right out the way pretty awesome tow hook they have now our carpet should be more loose for us I'm hoping So it appears that the upper pad needs to come down because the lower side here is quite stiff. It's not real flexible to just yank it under. So we're gonna pop this top pad off, I think would be the best bet. That's got a few Christmas tree fasteners on it. Also, Feels like it's more than just that though, fella. There's four of them across the back here. I'm gonna pull all them out just to see if that gives us any movement of the whole deal. Any more back up in here? Another one back up in there. Pew! Keep track. Any more up in here? Nope, oh, one way over there. You'll see them. You just have to kind of wheel along. There. Wow, all of them are out without breaking. Oh, there's another one. I suck at this. There we go. Okay, they're all out. Now, technically, this thing should come down. Oh, great. They got plastic washers behind them. That's handy. Thanks, Shuby. So that under the side. Uh, one more way in the back corner. I forgot. Hold on, folks. Bear with me here. You got to trust me. I don't want to move the camera. There. Well, that was easy. So I'll take that thing out. Are those magnets? It looks like in the very back. Are those magnets? Oh, wow, you tricky little guys at Chevrolet. Look at that. Those are magnets. That way you don't have to reach way in the back to undo any kind of clips. It's magnetized. <coughs> oh, man, it must be the crown. Let's see. Now, with this thing loose, 
that carpet goes all the way to the top and they got little tabs on it. That's ridiculous. Can we lightly, very gingerly, just tweak this out of the way now? Enough to get to our battery. Holly Lurie, yes we can. So we do not have to pull the back seat out, which is a blessing. I didn't want to go pull the back seat out. Wow, there's a lot of electronics in this corner. Look at all this mumbo jumbo. Under no circumstance are you to pressure wash this area as a warning on it. We got modules back here, fuse boxes. You don't want to get hit in the back corner of this thing, I'll tell you that much. Uh, so now, we'll open up the battery cover. We have a positive and a negative. Looks like we need some 10 mils. Uh, hopefully that all comes off in one piece. Let me get some tools. We'll get her unhooked. Uh, make darn sure your key is off at this point. If this car has an OnStar, you can trigger the backup battery for the OnStar by killing the battery power with the key on. Uh, things get stupid. And I don't believe that battery is, is rechargeable. I think it's a one-time emergency type thing. What on earth am I talking about, you say? I don't know. Let's look. I remember reading something here in service data. All right, so replace the battery. And why do you got to look in service data? Because some of these cars, like this one has a current sensor on it. Now, I didn't know if it had a battery current module, but this car doesn't have start-stop technology. So basically, I was looking to see if we, you know, do we have to tell the computer it has a new battery? You know, is there any procedure there? So that's why you always look in service data, especially on later model cars. Uh, let's see, but I believe under battery negative disconnection and connection. Okay. And there was a warning here. Uh, unless, other, unless directed otherwise, the ignition start switch must be in the off or lock position. And all electrical loads must be off before servicing any electrical component. Disconnect negative battery cable to, find, up to the following. These precautions may result in personal injury and or damage vehicle components. For vehicles equipped with OnStar, the UE1 RPO code, with backup battery, the backup battery is redundant power supply to allow limited OnStar function in the event of a main battery power disruption of the VCIM, the OnStar module, vehicle communication interface module. Do not disconnect the main battery or remove the OnStar fuse with the key in the on in any other position than off. Retaining accessory power should be allowed to time out. Disconnecting the power to the OnStar module in, in any way while ignition is on or with the retained accessory power, so the wrap in the GM, uh, may cause the, on, the activation of the OnStar backup battery system and will discharge and permanently damage the backup battery. Once the battery is activated, it will stay on until it's discharged. The backup battery is not rechargeable and once activated, it must be replaced. So there, I'm not crazy. However, I guess that it's debatable. Is he crazy? No, he's not crazy. You know, I might look like a hack on about 95% of stuff that I do on our channel, but Mind you, I do have a glance at, at service data, particularly with stuff like this. Like I say, you know, some cars, I think a lot of Euro stuff, you have to do, you know, relearns. And if this had start-stop technology with a current module, there is a relearn procedure there too. You know, you can even screw it up by charging your battery incorrectly. You know, so this has a current sensor here. This is that start-stop. Let's say you had to charge your battery and you were, you know, you come back here, you would have thought hooking the battery charger right to your battery would be the right thing to do, but actually it's not. You gotta hook your positive here and then your negative out on a chassis ground so, so the car can actually measure the current going into the battery and leaving the battery. It's how it determines uh, state of health, actually. So, for what it's worth, if anybody wants to know. Whoa! A lot of mumbo jumbo under this thing, huh? What, uh, how do we get all this crap loose? Wire's going that way, wire's going this way. That feels like it's latched onto the battery. Let me get some kind of pick or prying device. Yeah, new cars are kind of stupid. Well, I mean, they're not stupid, they're really smart, but... It's kind of silly, some of the stuff you have to do. That's technology, folks. And this car is old. I mean, this thing's six years old, so this is not even new technology. This is old school. 
my kids are working on a car someday, they'll be like, hey, you remember them old, them old caddies back in the day? Dad used to work on them old ones from the 14s. You folks are all right up in my way. Let me, um, in an effort to not break anything, I'm curious. This sucker feels like it's on there pretty good. I tell you what, let's, uh, let's be smart about it. Let's pop back in the service data here. Got electrical connectors in the bottom of it. Feels like it is attached to the side of the battery, and it must be. I'm going with my gut more than I'm going on the service data. I'm going to try to detach it from the side of the battery. There, see, told you. Had a clip on it. Alright, there it is. Pick her up. So that clips right on the top of the battery. There's a clip here and here. It's got two little edges on it. Now we've got to unhook our battery drain. Now these cars use an AGM battery, an acid glass matte battery. That's what you have to make sure that you replace it with. Don't be cheap. Oh yeah, she's heavy. Big girl. All right, let's get our new one slid down in there. Hold on folks, we're coming in. We're coming in hot. Make sure it has a drain on this side, and it does. Ooh, I see a small problem. So you see where we had the vent hose hooked to the battery is on this side over here. That way it can vent the toxic gases outside of your car. However, on both sides of the battery, there's a vent hole. So on the OEM battery, I need to remove the plug if we can, because I need to be able to plug the hole. So hopefully we can get that little guy out. Let me go get some other type of apparatus. There. Woo! That went into the positive side, right? Yep. So it's just a plug. We need to stick that in this side of the battery. That way it's not breathing toxic fumes inside the car. Well, good thing I noticed that. Could have taken out millions. So we'll set that back down in. Oh man, I gotta sneeze so bad. You don't dare. You don't even dare sneeze in public anymore. You can't sneeze, you can't cough. Oh, my nose hairs are getting wicked long. They make me sneeze, to be honest with you. Okay, so there, that's back in. There's that. Well, let's, let's punch out our date on it to be a good steward of the NAPA system. And it is April. Da -da. Pull that off. Now make sure the wires here, you don't get them pinched underneath it, you know what I mean? Slide them down beside the battery. Hopefully this one clicks right on like the OEM, and it does. That's map and know-how right there. I'll make sure that positive is down on there all the way. Snug it up. Toit, like a tiger. Woo! Okay, that's all good and tight. Happy with that. Don't really see much need for protective spray back here, to be honest with you. Pretty clean environment. It's like a laboratory. I need to sneak past you folks here. Okay, that's all good. Now before we hook up the negative, you guys did see me hook up that vent hose here on the front, right? If not, make sure you do that. Ugh. 
Sorry for the sniffles. Take, we're going to get our little bracket latched back in there. It needs to go. That was easy. The whole job's pretty easy. I don't think it's the one you want the, the guy at the Advance Auto out doing in the parking lot. Things could get ugly. We gotta get the black cap off. Save these things. These things are pretty handy to have around. What I use them for is like when we do a battery disconnect in a car, because you know you're doing some work on it. Ah, see the sparks? Uh, they are handy to have around. Because then you can have the cable just kind of laying here and you don't have to worry about it, you know, accidentally hitting when you've got the alternator out or whatever. You know, anything like that. Ooh -ah. Ooh -ah. There, that baby's nice and tight. Let's make sure the cart runs first. starts and runs. I know we're good in there, we're tight in there, everything's good here. So there are some other procedures you have to do once the battery's hooked up, like we might have to retrain the power windows, recalibrate the compass, uh, some silly stuff like that. So, okay, let's put it back together. Who would have ever thought that the days of SMA would have came down to battery replacement videos, huh? Not this guy. Napper is now closed on Fridays, so aren't we. No sense of being open at the parts store. Uh, parts distribution nationwide for Napa has shut down on Fridays, apparently. So we've elected to close on Fridays also and Mondays, because why not? Just temporarily. So not to fear, folks. Have no fear. The only thing we need to be worried about right now is how to get this little guy back where it belongs without doing any damage. It shouldn't be too hard, technically. The carpet edge goes just up under the edge of the rubber seal here. Kind of interesting. So we just kind of got to pull up on the lip of it. You can't see crap. No Steven Spielberg, am I? Speaking of, just finished up watching the last Indiana Jones movies in series. Because why not? You got nothing else to do with them. Well, we do, but at nighttime, you know, when you want to watch some TV. Watched all four of them. Good old Indy. Always getting the girls. Not that that's important, I'm just saying. You kind of get the general theme of his videos. They're all about the same. Treasure needs to be had. Almost dies, gets the girl, finds the treasure. Goes back to teaching like nothing ever happened. So we can put this back in. That's relatched. We can put uh, the fuse box cover back in. Way back under yonder, that has a little quarter turn type Barsner on it. That's back in. Okay, now uh, the thing up under there, or put this on next. Mm -hmm. Find all the slots it lines up in. Get them all. Pull the rubber up. Let me just make sure we got it. Yep, that side we got. Yep, it has been had. And then the rubber. 
rubber. I'll make sure we get that up all the way. It sits on top of it, similar to what the carpet does. It kind of sits in a little groove there. Adjust it like so. Got a little flapper. up with the latch, trunk latch. I'll put the hooks back in. Now these, they do, they are keyway, so to speak, or they have an alignment tab that has to be aligned. I wonder what the book time is on a uh, battery on one of these things. Probably not much. Some people get upset if you try to tell them that they have to pay to have a battery put in. And I think it is because of the, uh, you know, free battery testing, free battery replacement, free code reading, free diagnostics. Diagnostics, I say that using my claw hands, making quotation marks, that they advertise at the parts stores. You know, I think that term is thrown around so loosely that I think the people think we gotta get that carpet behind behind the plastic here. Missed it. Get behind. There we go. That one's behind. Now, there we go. I wonder why she wasn't lining up so perfect. That's the answer, but I don't know, it is what it is. I mean, you just if they don't like your price, uh, go somewhere else. That's my model. I mean, I'm not a jerk hole. I just I thank them for shopping with me or inquiring about a price, and then we move on. Definitely not the most expensive guy around. Not the cheapest either. We're right in the middle. But I try to do good work. rip anybody off. You know what I'm saying? Just try to leave, find things or leave things the same way you find them or better if you can. You know, if things are broke, try to fix them up or whatever. Just try not to break stuff is what I'm getting at. As I'm messing with this plastic garbage. All right, now that looks like it'll accept the upper piece now. Let's get that. This is the one that has the magnets on it that go way in the back. Isn't that that's the handiest thing? It's like that. Uh, I guess they're not super strong, but you hear them clicking. Pretty neat that they put magnets. Wouldn't want to be in the back of this trunk if you had a pacemaker. I don't know. Might not be true. So now we just got to push all the Christmas tree things back in. A bunch of them, as we found out. all across the board here. There's another one. I think there was one. Yeah, had one back in here, didn't I? I'll find a spot for it. There it is. And we got one more left. Right up in here. Oh baby, there wasn't any up here? Yeah, there is. All right, what'd you do with it, fella? Am I missing one? Can you guys, you don't even know where I'm at, do you? There's that one. 
Got one more in my hand. No job's complete unless you got parts left over. There's the last one. There's that. Okie dokie. That should be all of them. Grab your tools because you don't want to lose those. special that holds it in? Nope. Looks like it just sits in there. No fancy magnet or nothing? That's cheap. Reset all the stuff back in. Don't forget the Paisley cup. And uh, that's it. Then you close the trunk. And then you put the battery charger on it. No, I had that up here from before. Uh, anyhow, I see now percent of the battery, 97% charge. That's pretty good. So, uh, how about you guys be good and head down there to that comment box. Give me your questions, comments, criticism, concerns. Lay down there, subscribe, ring that bell, and then uh, just leave your story about the worst battery you've ever changed in your life. This isn't it, I'll tell you that. But let me know. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.